find it hard to sleep <laughs> after a game, and the, the game goes through my mind what I've done well and what I haven't done so good. Dean Coney, Dixie, has accepted John's offer of one-to-one -one sessions, focusing on individual weaknesses. His weakness is that when he's passing an opponent, he invariably dodges to the left and finds it difficult to go the other way. So now John is asking him to visualize dodging to the right. This time, Dean, I'd like you to go back to the beginning and then take a deep breath and hold it for a moment. And Keeping your eyes closed, tell me what you're doing, as if you're doing it now, and how it feels. Well, I'm just uh, running towards the defender. Yeah. And I just dropped my left shoulder okay. and moved the ball to the right, with the outside of my right foot. And okay. momentum takes me past him on the Great. outside. Good. OK. And maybe you open your eyes when you're finished. That was all right, you could do it? Yeah. Yeah. I feel myself going, Doing it. you know, yeah. yeah. So you know exactly it's what it's It's not natural like. to me no. to do that. I naturally go the yeah, other right. way. So, really, in order to develop that, you know what it is. You just need to practice it more. I mean, you can practice it more out there, yeah, of course, right, yeah. which is important, too. Yeah. If, you're, if you're taking the decision now, or you took it the other day, that this is for a, it's worth spending a week to develop this particular thing, this particular ability, then... Um, it's good for you to actually practice it as often as you can, but also in your mind to practice it. Martin Allen, despite the doubts he expressed at the meeting, has also volunteered. Initially, his aim is to improve his speed. His ideal is his teammate Paul. Paul Parker's speed is just exceptional. I mean, he could make a mistake or somebody else makes a mistake and you think the centre forward's got this and all of a sudden Paul's sort of taken off and he's there, mm. you know, he's got that and he's straight in for it. He's like a couple of steps and he's so quick and he's there. And uh, it's great, you know, I'd wish I had that sort of speed. Right. <laughs> I wish I had, uh, I, wish you, the, I wish I had the bit of film of what you just did. Like this, like this. Yeah, because that, 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 you know, that. I mean, that's a bit of film of that would be a good Would As you said it, you were feeling what it's like to do it. Mm. Okay. That's what I want to remind you of. Because inside there is that feeling. And the more you reinforce that feeling, the more you're going to find it on the pitch when you need it. Mm. Given that you keep working at the physical exercises as well. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do the visualization now. For Martin's visualization, John is using a different technique. Martin tends to dwell on moments when things didn't work out. So John's taking one such moment and helping him to transform it into a success. Running onto the ball. Okay, you can feel yourself running on the ball. Take the ball forward. Yeah. Run towards the goal. Great. And then? Um. Where's Tony Adams? You, can just, you know, Tony Adams has come in from the side and behind me. Yeah. On my right. And I'll flick the ball across the front of him to, and to try to go on the other side. Yeah. And just as he slid, push the ball forward, and I'd have been clear. Right. OK. And how does it feel to do that? Uh, uh, it just felt, it would have felt good. Yeah. Good. All right. Two weeks into the experiment, QPR faced their toughest game yet, an away match against Liverpool. To study the effect of John's exercises, QED has appointed an assessor, Sally Newman, who is sports editor of QPR's local newspaper. Here's Dean Coney, Allen. Martin Allen's aim is to improve his speed. According to Sally Newman, in this game he has certainly been fast enough to win most of his tackles. What's more, quite often when he had the ball, he'd win a tackle and another player would be straight onto him and he'd still fight through. 
Dean Coney's aim is to dodge to the right, but today he's had little opportunity to even try it. Dean Coney had a difficult job. He was up against Alan Hansen, mostly in the air, and he didn't win many balls. He had very little ground possession at all. In fact, the whole team found themselves under more and more pressure as the game went on. The final result was a 4-0 win for Liverpool. He's got Beardsley going to his left, but still Barnes. That's a fabulous individual goal. The team's defeat inevitably means they'll be depressed. That may well be something John Sire will want to work on later. For the moment, it's up to manager Jim Smith to console them. We had four good chances there in the second half by passing the ball, didn't we? Hey, four good chances. We were a bit unlucky, and I thought you should have scored on others. So don't get your head down. As I said, most of your job was right. Just wash your way a little bit. <coughs> and we're still top of the table, ain't we? Be cool with Liverpool, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the following week, it's business as usual at the training ground. For John, the immediate task is to get the players to check their individual aims with Jim Smith and Peter Shreve, the team coach. I think what I would say to you, Martin, is, yeah, OK, everyone would like to be as fast as Paul Park or, you know, mm -hmm. catch pigeons. I'm saying to you, that is not your number one requirement. Mm -hmm. in your development at the minute. What you showed on the training ground this morning is what you should be concerned with. When you've got possession of the ball, taking your time, making the pass that means the most to the team. Yeah. Martin summed up the idea of taking his time as composure on the ball. In his new visualization, it's that composure which allows him to score. In Dean's case, Jim has suggested he should change his aim to being more aggressive, particularly as his original aim of dodging opponents to the right has already been effective. I played in the under-21 game, England under-21s, and it actually, I actually did do the... I went past on the outside uh, uh, and got a crossing. And automatically, I just thought of you. Right. And then just got on with the game, you know? It just flashed through my mind. Oh, that's great. But I mean, what... I'd like to say, is, I mean, I, know, I, I did put that down, is yes. I'd like to improve it, but I mean, obviously, there's quite a few things. Well, that's right. What that, you've been going over. I mean, I, I, I agree with what the boss has said yeah. about being more nasty. More nasty. Being nasty, I don't think he means go around elbowing people. No, Things exactly. like that. He just means getting in front. Getting and, in front. And, you know, getting over the top of people like for headers, which is what more specific what he said. You know, I'm on a challenging. Perhaps, you know, perhaps I could work on that. Dean sums up his new aim as being attack-minded when facing goal. His new visualisation is to score with a header. In the reality of the Football League, goals are harder to come by. They depend not only on individuals, but on the team as a whole. And just recently, team morale has taken a battering. After a league win against Portsmouth, QPR's defeat in the Littlewoods Cup by 3rd Division Berry came as a nasty shock. But here too, John Sire's methods can help. He's suggested a team meeting where his aim will be to get the players to think and talk about their problems and to suggest their own solutions. John has asked Jim Smith to provide the subject. The one Jim has chosen is belief in the team's ability to win. In terms of what it means for you right now, what level is your level of belief? If you were to score it out of ten, what would it be? Eight, seven, 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 eight, seven, six, seven, ten. Right. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, That's good. Me there. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, so th th that's, a, that's a baseline point. And I think, I mean, I appreciate the tens, but speaking for myself about anything I do, I, you know, sometimes I feel ten and sometimes I don't, and uh, it comes and goes a bit. So I want to sort of explore a little bit more the times when you feel ten out of ten and the times when maybe you feel only five out of ten. Okay, so I'd like you to write down an occasion or a situation in a match which gives you a feeling of, uh-uh, I'm not so sure. My belief isn't so high. When you've all finished, I want you to, uh, how many are we, 13, four? Could you count off to seven? What, like one, say, call out the numbers, John, if you call out the number one. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. And then, eight. no, you go one again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so would you find the person who's the same number of you as you, take your chair, break up the circle. You've got five minutes with your partner just discussing what you've written down and listening to what he's got written down. <laughs> What makes things go wrong with it? Now he's got them talking, John wants each pair to decide which situations undermine their belief so that he can draw up a full list for the whole team. Just run out of ideas. If you look at these for the moment and see which of these are very specific that you feel you might be able to do something about, which do you think are most important? Can you choose three? Put a mark like this against the three that you find most important. No ideas when a goal's down was scored highest. Players arguing, which is also some, something like this one, these two that were linked. And players arguing was the second one. Now that the players have identified their two most urgent problems, John splits the team into groups of four to decide on possible solutions. He's happy with our play, so uh, it's got to come from the top. Yeah. That way, yeah. Yeah. But we've, not, we've got to know when to change that particular system. I don't feel there's been too much arguing throughout the team all season. What's silly arguing anyway? Well, been constructed, it? Yeah. And when it has? It's been constructed. Finish well, then. It's been good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's hear what, what, what we've got. The first group. Uh, for the first question, we've got um, that I think the system we're playing, I think that we've got to have, when we do go a goal down and we're chasing a goal, I think we've got to have... Um, something works out before, maybe in training, that we can change it. Well, we decided that we don't think the arguing's been a problem this season anyway, you know. We felt that conceding a goal against Pompey, uh, we seem to have a mental block about creating chances. So, did you come up with an idea as to how to...? Well, I think us as defenders, we, you know, we feel as though we've got to be patient. Yeah, OK. And, and keep passing rather than throwing caution to the wind. Out of this, we've got... I mean, one thing that was, was very specific was, well, maybe we should plan a bit more in training for being a goal down. I don't know what you'd think about that. But it's a bit negative. <laughs> a bit negative. <laughs> but I mean, to have a plan. But they're right. I think, I, think that, I think that is a fair point. I think you've got to. Uh, no, I think it. it was our intention to do that today because, uh, you know, we had that against Bury. But then we had three players, uh, you know, who was unfit and unwell. We wasn't able to do what we'd intended, Budge. But, I mean, it's right. If you want something in training put on for you, then it's your job to come and see me and the boss and say, look, this is what I feel, this is what we feel. It's a team game. We're part of the team as well. By providing the players with the opportunity to talk more openly in an organised setting, John's beginning to open up the two-way communication that Jim wants.
strangely enough, improved communication is what Martin Allen sees as one of the biggest benefits of his individual work. Before, um, I didn't have anybody to sort of tell me what I'd done wrong or how I could improve. I was just sort of part of the team and the team meeting. The team have got to do this, the team have got to do that. But then it came to these individual meetings and instead of the team, it was Martin, you're not making enough tackles or you're not composed enough around the box or in the midfield. And so it's made me think more about that on a personal thing. To reinforce his individual aims, Martin has put up pictures and slogans as constant reminders of what they are. But doing the visualisation has been more of a challenge. I do find the visualisation hard to do. The way you just sort of sit down and you let it drain all through your body, and then you think about this goal, and then if you scored it. Because I think I do visualise things anyway, in my own sort of way. And so now to sit down and do it all through the week is a bit different for me. The purpose of Martin's visualisation is to help him develop his composure on the ball. The following Saturday against Norwich, when he needed that composure, he found it. Martin Allen. Martin's goal meant that QPR drew against Norwich, as they did in their next match against Watford. It's now John Sire's final week with the team. His aim today is to prepare the players for their forthcoming game against Tottenham. Looking ahead to Saturday's game, the two questions that I'd like to take today, and if you could get your pens and paper and answer them, are these. The first one is, what was the main message for you at training today? Second question is, what issues still need clarifying before Saturday? Under John's guidance, the players have become much more willing to think and talk about their problems. The basic team pattern needs to be practiced after the change of players participating. I just felt that um, after having a lot of success earlier on in the season, I think we're getting away from what is expected of indi individuals within the team. Uh, for instance, I thought within the last two or three weeks, full-backs have pushed on far too quick when we've won position. And that's not allowing me to come out and join up with the midfield. Um, it has changed, especially for me as a midfield player. Now, being part of three out-and-out -out midfield players with Justin coming in on the right, Kevin in the middle, and now me playing on the left. Um, before, I, I knew exactly with Kevin, when you had the ball, virtually all the time, me and Kevin would make our crossover runs. Before John came to QPR, a discussion like this would have been unheard of. Now, Martin, like the other players, is much more willing to express his concerns over the details of tactical play. As a result, all of them have come to understand one another much better. I think what's happened again this morning, people, all of you, are communicating better and, and offering, offering your observations, which I think is important. And I think you've also got to carry that onto the pitch. While you're talking to one another in here, you've got to talk a little bit more on the pitch, as I felt that wasn't there again this morning. You know, good instruction I'm talking about, not uh, rollicking. I mean, I think we should talk a little bit more and, and be more helpful with our tongue uh, with to on the pitch. The team is on its way to Tottenham. A win today could put them back to the top of the league. For John, it marks the end of his six-week period. And for the players, another chance to put what they've learnt into practice. I've been thinking about being attack-minded, whereas in other games, you didn't even think nothing about it. You just done what you had to do. But now when the uh, ball's up the other end of the field, or even, even when it's uh, up this end of the field, you thinking about being attacked. Over the six weeks, our assessor, Sally Newman, feels that Martin and Dean have achieved their aims. Dean seems to be thinking ahead in terms of attack, even when he's in his own half. He's playing so that he can create chances for other players, and if chances fall to him, he knows what to do with them. There was one chance he certainly knew what to do with, a header, just as he had visualised. Oh 
In Martin's case, she thinks his newfound composure has made him a more effective player. Martin seems to have gained in confidence. The aggression which is always shown seems to have been channeled into attacking play much more over recent weeks. QPR held Tottenham to a draw, despite playing most of the match with only ten men. Great result there, no? Yeah, great result there, of course. Although the experiment has lasted only six weeks, Jim Smith believes that John has benefited the whole team. He has made a definite impact in ways that I didn't first think that was going to happen, and that is people being more mentally aware of their own teammates' duties, their own duties, and uh, how they can help themselves to be more positive and more confident on the pitch. And I think if they're all doing that, it communicates a team spirit and there's a, a better feeling amongst everybody and that is also very important. Thank you. 